Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this presentation of Evolving EDR into XDR Without Breaking Your Sock. I'm Rick Kacha, Chief Marketing Officer at Red Canary, and I'm joined by Keith McCammon, our co-founder and Chief Security Officer here at Red Canary. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, Rick. So, uh, Keith, cloud, EDR, XDR, microservices, containers, every company seems to be looking at um, some form of architecture modernization. You know, how do you do that uh, without exposing yourself to risk and lose visibility um, into threats that you might have? You know, Keith, you've been doing this for a long time. Love to uh, get a thought on, on how companies are doing this today. Uh, yeah, Rick, uh, definitely looking forward to the discussion. It is, uh, it's, a, it's a unique mix of, you know, the right people, uh, the right expertise and the right technology stack. And so definitely looking forward to digging in and helping people understand that. Me too. So the title of this uh, presentation is Migrating from EDR to XDR. EDR is a big deal because the endpoint is a big deal. I know when I've spoken to CISOs before, um, EDR and endpoint projects tend to be top of their priority. When I asked one why it was so important, he told me, well, in a cloud first world, as I move things from my data center to the cloud, the endpoint remains one of the few things that's fully under my control. And so it's a place that I can really secure it. You know, Keith, you've had years of experience in Red Canary helping customers secure the endpoint. You know, what are your thoughts on this? As someone responsible for securing enterprises, like we look at it as a point of control as well, right? And for us, that control is, uh, you know, the ability to effectively perform detection, investigation, and response. And so um, based on what we know about the tactics and techniques that adversaries are leveraging, uh, the endpoint is still like the predominant uh, means of access into organizations and it's the predominant objective. And so uh, securing endpoints like, is as important as it's ever been. And uh, it's definitely the foundation from our perspective of like really effective detection and response. So endpoints important and EDR has really sprung up as a market category, <clears throat> endpoint detection and response, protecting the endpoint. Um, in fact, some of the most uh, valuable security companies are now endpoint companies, EDR companies, whereas a few years ago, they were firewall companies. Um, so EDR is seen as a huge fix and a, a, uh, something very important. Um, it's got its own challenges. And I know, Keith, you've got years of experience with EDR specifically. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and what customers are, are looking at and what they're struggling with when they try and put EDR in place? Yeah, absolutely. Uh like, as we just discussed, right, um, endpoints are critical to being able to effectively dis detect and respond to threats. Um, that visibility does come at a really, really high operational cost, meaning that a lot of the value that you get from something like EDR um, depends on you asking it the right questions and then having the ability to run those investigative leads to ground. Um, the most important thing is still knowing a, of all this data and of all these alerts, like what's the one thing that my team needs to go respond to right now? And uh, so um, it is like, you know, like, like most things, a huge opportunity, but it is, it's a really fundamental operational challenge. And so like taking that technology and turning it into an operational capability is, um, is really important and really valuable, but it's also really difficult. So there's huge opportunity in EDR. It can be really challenging to make it operationally successful. MDR, managed detection and response, really arose as a category uh, with a goal of making EDR successful and making it work. You know, Keith, you've had years of experience in here as the founder of the leading MDR company. Uh, maybe you could talk for a few minutes about how MDR addresses those challenges with successful EDR. Absolutely. It's so um, it really is, uh, you know, when we look at how MDR compares to like prior service offerings, things like MSSP offerings, uh, you know, those are really optimized for taking in a tremendous amount of data from a wide variety of sources, um, but going relatively shallow operationally. Like you don't necessarily have the ability to dig in and do like really in-depth detection, investigation, and response. And so, um, MDR really is like laser focused on providing an exceptional operational capability. That's like the most important thing and like the critical pillars of that. Um, you know, when we talk to customers and you know, we try to understand the biggest challenges that they faced, those were, you know, 
having like building or getting access to high quality threat intelligence. So understanding like what modern threats the business faces and which ones you need to focus on first. Uh, research and detection engineering so that you can take that intelligence build the right analytics and ensure that you're going to detect those threats when they appear. Uh, and then really effective response, right? Like being able to respond decisively and having a lot of confidence that when you do go to respond, like you understand the threat, you understand how to contain it and you can help the business recover. Great. So just about the time we learned how to use MDR to make EDR successful. Now here's what's coming next, it's XDR. <laughs> Um, Forrester recently published a report that said XDR, Extended Detection and Response, is the next generation of EDR. So sort of taking an endpoint centered view of security and expanding it because you're moving things to the cloud and you still have legacy products on the network. And so being able to look across that really matters. So endpoint centric, but expanded really matters. Keith, you're seeing this with our customer base. You know, what are the kind of challenges and what are the questions they're asking as they look to expand from an EDR deployment to broader XDR technology? I'd say the very first thing is just, you know, you, you mentioned the word endpoint. And I think the biggest question that our, you know, that our customers have is like, what should we consider an endpoint today? Right. And, and I think that really like fundamentally the definition of an endpoint has changed, right? Um, it used to be very focused on traditional computing technology and platforms. And you know, the reality is that, uh, your cloud workloads, uh, your SaaS providers, uh, every bit of information technology that your business relies on in one way or another is an endpoint to you. And so, um, you know, when we look at the threats that we're facing um, as that technology evolves, um, you don't just have threats to your traditional computing assets, you have threats to your entire supply chain. And that's obviously been, you know, front of mind for folks for months now just as a result of recent events, right? Every single one of these uh, technologies that's used to access, process, store your data um, is a, a tremendous like point of leverage for your business, but it's also a point of risk. And so um, I think that really is the key to thinking about like why we've evolved our thinking from EDR into XDR. It's just because the, you know, the underlying technology involves the network, mobile devices, all of these cloud providers um, and it's it's critical that the security stack you rely on like follows that technology trend. It seems to me one thing that's interesting here is this isn't purely a technology play. So if I look at some of these points here, like intelligence, investigation, response, you know, those are just as much people issues and staffing issues and team issues as they are, you know, technology issues. And I know one of the things that um, we see from the Red Canary side is it's not just giving customers technology, but also uh, adding expertise. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. And you know, you run the security team here, and those experts work for you. So you know, how do you think about that? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. The um, you know that technology foundation is absolutely it's critically important, uh, and it is like you know you can't lose sight of that. Uh, that's what we rely on to get visibility. Um, and it really is like, it's the thing that puts the team in a position to do great work. But, uh, you know, we keep mentioning the word operations and that like operations is the, like your people um, are the thing that's going to take, you know, all of your other investments and really like make them successful. And so that is, uh, you know, those, again, asking the right questions of all that data, job number one. And so like building threat, Threat intelligence is probably like the most costly thing uh, to build and mature. Um, it, it, even for Red Canary, um, you know, if you look at the evolution of our team uh, over the years, getting to the point where you can really effectively consume intelligence, prioritize it, and then operationalize it is exceptionally difficult. And so that that is. Uh, like really the, the foundation of, of any great security program, um, even any great risk management program. And so they, that, that challenge has always existed. And, um, and along, you know, along with that comes being able to effectively you know, perform detection, do investigation, and then per, you know, your incident response team and capability have to be there at the end to make sure that when you've identified a threat, like you have like the people, you have the reach, you have the access to systems to go and neutralize that and protect the business. And so um, 
you know, those challenges, and this is kind of the prevailing theme, right? Like the, uh, the technology landscape and the security technology, the business technology, that stuff's never going to stop changing out from under us. Um, but when you kind of look at headwinds, uh, it's really interesting to think about, you know, how, how important they are, but also how little they change over time. Um, and like so many things in security, like just, you know, the fact that it's, uh, the fact that it's a constant um, and that it has existed over time, like these same challenges, doesn't make them any easier. So. It seems to me that if you're a customer trying to figure out how to deal with all of this, you know things are going to change. So one thing you should be thinking about is how do I have some layer of constant and abstraction and protection as things change? Um, you know, a little bit of a shameless plug for Red Canary. We see our platform as that and the ability to give you um, capabilities for protecting yourself via understanding your data, detecting detecting threats and a combination of technology plus those experts we've talked about, being able to investigate without having lots of noise and able to respond effectively. That's not just a customer, it's not just us, it's a mix of the two. Um, I think we've seen from our perspective as customers have moved from just the endpoint and saying, hey, I've got um, an older EPP product, I want to migrate to a new EDR. How can I do that without everything breaking? Hey, I've got things that used to run, VMs that used to run in my data center. Now I'm moving them to some sort of Kubernetes containers running in Azure or AWS. How do I have some protection over that? And hey, I still have all kinds of old things running. How do you help me make sense of that? Um, the good news is our platform can do it across that as you migrate and move. Um, that capability either by fully taking detection and response as a service, if you're sort of a smaller company or to augment your own detection and response capabilities with this, all of that's there as the pieces move around. Um, that's the promise, you know, what are you seeing with the customers so far and how they're doing this and how are their systems evolving? Yeah, I, I think you know, that the bit that you said, like you know, related to like how this works for businesses of all sizes, uh, every business is different. Um, Every security team that we work with is different. Um, we work with a lot of businesses where the IT team is the security team. And so, um, and you know, thinking about um, how something like this can be equally effective and equally valuable if, you know, if Red Canary is the entire security program or security operations program in particular, or if you already have a really mature security program and what you need is someone to augment that program and go really deep in detection and response. Um, like, that's the thing that, you know, uh, I think it's the thing that customers like, have always asked for and valued most um, is not just the ability to, you know, drop in a really like, world-class security operations in, inside of hours, right? Um, but also have confidence that like, as they grow and as their team grows, um, that like, not only do we continue to grow with them, but it's equally valuable to them just in different ways, right? And that's, uh, that is probably like, you know, if anytime you're, you know, in a leadership position, right? You're always trying to solve today's problems, but you're trying to, you know, anticipate the problems you're going to have down the road. And, you know, just being agile enough to be able to bear the brunt of, you know, consuming data from all of this changing technology and staying on top of all of these changing threats. Um, and, you know, you mentioned just being a constant, right? Like that's probably the thing we look to do more so than anything else. It's just like be the constant that customers can rely on um, so that they can keep their eye on like where they need to go and then less so on where they are today. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's bring it home and let's bring it home by giving some some bits of wisdom. Um, how should customers be looking at this and what should they continue doing? What should they start doing that they're not? What might they stop doing? You know, let's give us a little bit of advice here, Keith. The first piece of advice I would give, uh, and it's really hard to distill down, you know, everything you should start doing or stop doing into a few key points, uh, is to ensure that your security stack aligns with the technology that powers your business. Um, that means making sure that you have like, visibility into all of your systems, that you've got reliable, like centralized data collection that's going to allow you to build analytics and perform effective detection and response. Um, and make sure that that's agile enough to evolve as your business evolves, right? Um, that's, that's always job one. Uh, and as we've discussed already, um, it definitely doesn't stop there. The next thing you need to do is understand you know, your capacity 
and your capability for security operations. Um, and don't just look to today, but you know, look to other peers, leaders in the industry, um, and understand you know, whether you want to invest in building a security operations capability that's right size for your business now and in the future, um, whether you believe you can sustain that, um, and you know, be re be realistic, right? I know we've you know even at Red Canary, like we've fallen into the trap of saying, hey, we're going to go build a team to do X, um, and it almost always turns out that in this industry, like whatever you whatever X is, like X is always harder, more expensive, more time consuming than you think, and so um, you know, understand and be realistic about that, and I think that really kind of dovetails into this last point, which is that you know, as a leader, um, and you know, as you know, in an industry where you really do have like access to better technology, better teams and better partners than I think, you know, you've ever had before, understand that you don't have to go it alone. And so I kind of look at all of these things with a really critical eye um, and ask yourself, you know, do I need to perform this function or can I find somebody that I trust uh, to perform this function for me so that my team is free to do the things that, like my team has to do very uniquely, right? Making decisions, that require business context, performing that last mile response that is really, really close to business in your day-to-day -day operations. Um, and so, you know, look at all this really holistically and try to figure out, hey, like which things should I go build and do? And which things can I do really effectively uh, through partnership? Um, and, you know, give yourself a lot of leverage and really like that's, that, those are the things I think that, you know, for our most successful customers, have allowed them to establish a really rock solid security program and a roadmap um, and execute to, execute to it effectively. It's just, you know, um, build what you can, um, buy what you can, but at all times kind of make sure that you have a really holistic view of this and you're optimizing for, you know, for forward progress. I think um, getting, a, getting a holistic view and not trying to go it alone. Um, I know your team of security engineers and threat researchers uh, write pretty prolifically and blog uh, regularly on a lot of these topics. And it's uh, anyone who's interested in reading that and, and getting really uh, sort of straight from the horse's mouth on some of these things can go to the Red Canary site, redcanary.com. If you want to learn any more, you can see it there. And if you have any questions about um, any of the things we've talked about or how we can help, you can just reach us at, reach us at info at redcanary.com. So Keith, let me say thanks for the time. Um, for all the audience, thank you for your time. We hope this was helpful. And we look forward to hearing from you, hearing from you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, everyone.